Originally designed as an anti-aircraft cannon, the German 88mm flak gun was so effective and versatile that it was deployed on German tanks. As an anti-tank gun, an assault gun, and for anti-aircraft purposes. The 88 earned its reputation as the best overall gun of the war. And it was feared by Allied airmen, tankers, and foot soldiers because of its accuracy, lethality, and versatility. Krupp company designers in partnership with Bofors of Sweden, developed the gun in the late 1920s by working in Switzerland to avoid post-World War I treaty restrictions. The famous flak gun got its name from the German word Flugabwehrkanon, meaning aircraft defense cannon. The name applies to a series of guns, the first one officially called the 88 Flak 18, the improved 88 Flak 36, and later the 88 Flak 37. During the Spanish Civil War, German troops fired the guns at oncoming tanks and fortified bunkers with very effective results. This success in combat led to versions of the 88 equipped to engage ground targets that were in view or barrage enemies from long range. The gun's high muzzle velocity and heavy projectile made the 88 particularly effective against heavily armored vehicles. And it could fire at rates of 15 to 20 rounds a minute, which was better than similar weapons of the era. The weapon was rugged, hard-hitting, and adaptable. The 88 Flak was used in two main roles, as a mobile heavy anti-aircraft and as an anti-tank gun. After 1935, the anti-aircraft defense of Germany was controlled by the Luftwaffe. The guns were grouped in batteries of four with a predictor. When the Flak batteries pinpointed an aircraft, the guns were fired in salvos designed to burst in a sphere of 55 meters in diameter in which it was hoped to entrap the target. Each 88 gun, could project a shell to 9,000 meters and could knock out an aircraft within 30 meters of the shell burst. However, the fragments from the explosion was still capable of inflicting serious damage up to 180 meters. By August 1944, there were about 10,000 Flak 18, 36 and 37 guns in service, and the Flak accounted for 3,500 American planes destroyed which was almost half of the total planes lost. The 88 Flak performed well in its original role of an anti-aircraft gun and it proved to be a superb anti-tank gun as well. Its success was due to its versatility, the standard anti-aircraft platform allowed gunners to depress the muzzle below the horizontal, unlike most of its contemporaries. As World War II progressed, it was becoming increasingly clear that existing anti-tank weapons were unable to pierce the armor of heavier enemy tanks, and ground commanders began increasingly to use the 88 flak against tanks. It was powerful enough to penetrate over 84 mm of armor at a range of 2 km, making it an unparalleled anti-tank weapon during the early days of the war and still formidable against all but the heaviest tanks at the end. It was used extensively in the Spanish Civil War, where its usefulness as an anti-tank weapon and general artillery piece exceeded its role as an anti-aircraft gun. In the entire Battle of France, the weapon destroyed 152 tanks and 151 bunkers. The North African campaign of the war, saw the most effective use of the weapon, causing severe destruction of British and American tanks. The weapon saw continuous use on the Eastern Front during Operation Barbarossa. The Germans were so impressed with the 88 that as early as 1936, plans were laid out to mount the weapon on a tank that eventually became the Tiger I. The accuracy and distance of the Tiger I's 88 gun often resulted in a one-shot, one-kill ratio for the Germans against Allied tanks and their crews. The Germans also used the 88 as a self-propelled gun. That further improved its mobility and increased its usefulness for close-in support for ground troops. The 88 also was mounted on railway cars and used there in anti-aircraft roles.
Developments continued on the basic flak gun, resulting in the emergence of the 88 Flak 41 that first saw real action in late 1943 in Tunisia. The gun proved to be a significant improvement on earlier models, despite its complexity and high cost of production. The Flak 41 was used primarily for air defense in the West, so its anti-armor use was limited. The Germans also designed an 88 Pac 43 as a dedicated anti-tank weapon, with the first ones coming off the production lines by the end of 1943. It soon became widely recognized as perhaps the best all-around anti-tank gun of the war. It could easily provide firepower in a full 360-degree traverse and it could penetrate the frontal armor of any Allied tank on the field. The 88 Pac 43 was modified and placed on the Tiger II tank. This feared tank was designed to hold 40 high explosive and 40 armor piercing rounds. The Pac 43 also was employed as a self propelled gun in a number of forms, including the Nashorn, Rhinoceros, and the Ferdinand. Interestingly, both Britain and the United States had guns with somewhat similar anti-aircraft capabilities as the 88 flag. Both the British 94mm and the American 90mm could fire higher and loft larger projectiles. On paper they could outperform the German gun. Both weapons, though, were bulkier and heavier. The Allies restricted those guns to their initial anti-aircraft roles, while the Germans expanded the 88's role to anti-tank and against fortified ground positions. This, in turn, led to other advances all of which made the weapon far more versatile and effective. Its successful service history is perhaps best described in the words of an American historian and World War II veteran, Paul Fussell. He wrote that American troops knew that the greatest single weapon of the war, the atomic bomb accepted, was the German 88mm gun, which brought down thousands of bombers and tens of thousands of soldiers. The Allies had nothing as good. The Germans' flexible and innovative approach to the initial 88 flak permitted them to learn and adapt as the war progressed, improving the anti-aircraft fire capabilities of the weapon and they successfully modified it for tank, anti-tank, and related ground roles. This contributed greatly to the 88's lasting reputation as the legendary large gun of World War II. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, please subscribe the channel for more such videos.